Welcome to episode number 54. I'm CJ Wellerman. Thank you for joining us. In this week's episode, we reveal how the international community is slowly waking up to the horrors unfolding against Muslims in India and Kashmir. But first, a quick reminder to click the subscribe button below so you never miss a single episode. Now, let's get into it. For the past two years, human rights experts have been warning of a looming Muslim holocaust in India and Kashmir because of actions taken by India's fascist Hindu nationalist regime, which has made no secret of its intent to annihilate the religious minority in its pursuit of transforming the country into a Hindu nation. This show has spent the past year sounding its alarm bell. In episode after episode, we have demonstrated how the Indian government, along with its Hindu national supporters, have been inching Muslims towards genocide. But today, that genocide is now well underway, and the Indian government is no longer trying to hide it. Watch here as a member of Narendra Modi's party urges mass violence against Muslims in Bihar last week. हमारे देश के लोग मजबूत हों और जिस तरह रावण की लंका हनुमान जी ने जलाया था उसी तरह बिहार और देश पर जो राक्षस रूपी रावण सब मरा रहे हैं उसको जला दिया जाए बीस कॉल्स फॉर जेनोसाइड आर रिपीटेड बाय हिंदू एक्सट्रीमिस्ट लीडर्स अक्रॉस द कंट्री लास्ट वीक ए प्रोमिनेंट हिंदू प्रीचर इन राजस्थान कॉल्ड ऑन हिंदूस टू रिपीट द जेनोसाइड कमिटेड अगेंस्ट मुस्लिम्स इन गुजरात 20 इयर्स अगो सेइंग वी विल किल यू वन बाय वन when they're not urging Hindus to attack Muslims, these Hindu nationalists are calling for the mass boycott of Muslim-owned businesses and then taking public pledges to transform India into a Hindu-only nation, like a lawmaker within Modi's party did two weeks ago, here. For 200 million Indian Muslims, mob violence, lynching murders, sexual violence, discriminatory laws, police harassment and home demolitions have become the new normal. Muslim women in colleges have been banned from wearing the hijab, Muslim villages have been beat to death on false rumours of cow smuggling and now police are participating in violent attacks against Muslims while others are tortured to death in custody. And now we see members of mainstream right-wing Hindu organisations including the youth wing of VHP undergo weapons training in preparation for a Muslim genocide. Well, that's the very bad news. The good news is this, the cavalry is coming because the world is finally waking up at long last to the horrors taking place in India and Kashmir. There are many examples, but let's start with Narendra Modi's recent visit to Germany, where mainstream German television networks slammed the Indian Prime Minister for his crackdown on journalists, particularly those who report anti-Muslim hate crimes. In India, journalists frequently face police violence, attacks from political activists and criminals, as well as targeted hate campaigns. That places India as down as 142 out of 180 countries when it comes to press freedom. Reporters Without Borders squarely places the blame for this on Prime Minister Narendra Modi's government. The group says that under him, journalists have been attacked and intimidated to toe the line and not criticize the government, which could get them labeled as anti national and when Modi visited Denmark during the second leg of his European tour, a major Danish television network broadcasted anti-Modi protesters who warned Muslims of being pushed to the brink of genocide. Um, Alina Kala, um, why are you here demonstrating this evening? Under Prime Minister Modi, India is being pushed to the brink of a genocide. India is no longer a democracy because of him, but an electoral autocracy. And members of his party are calling for genocide, but he is not condemning it. That's why we're protesting. Similar protests are being held by Indian expatriate groups in the United States and Canada. And on May 4, thousands of Maldivians in the island state of the Maldives 
talked to the streets to protest against India's growing military presence in the region and its mistreatment of Muslims. <laughs> We're also now seeing headlines in major American newspapers, which are now accurately reporting the horrors unfolding against Muslims in India. As seen here during the past two weeks with the Washington Post and the Chicago Tribune. And then last month, US-based Vice magazine published this documentary on the bulldozing of Muslim homes and forced evictions of Muslims in the state of Assam. In the last year, the Hindu nationalist government in Assam state has targeted more than a dozen Muslim villages for eviction. Officials say there's In the last year, the Hindu nationalist government in Assam state has targeted more than a dozen Muslim villages for eviction. Officials say they're simply reclaiming land from encroachers. But rights activists believe this is the latest step in a nationwide campaign by the ruling party to turn India into a Hindu nation by going after religious minorities. You'll also remember that this program not only exposed the lies and Hindu nationalist propaganda that sits at the heart of the recently released movie The Kashmir Files, but also we urged a global boycott of the film. Well, Singapore was paying attention because it has moved to ban the film, saying it promotes violence against Muslims. Singapore has banned the Bollywood movie The Kashmir Files, assessing it to be beyond the city-state's film classification guidelines. According to reports, the Singaporean authorities refused classification of the Hindi language film for its provocative and one-sided portrayal of Muslims and the depictions of Hindus being persecuted in the ongoing conflict in Kashmir. What all of this means is the work we're doing, along with the work performed by thousands of other human rights activists, is starting to gain traction. The world is starting to sit up and take notice of the unfolding situation in India under the fascist Modi regime. Last month, US Secretary of State Antony Blinken expressed the US government's concern regarding India's human rights abuses. Commitment to our democratic values, such as protecting human rights. We regularly engage with our Indian partners on these shared values, and to that end, we're monitoring some recent concerning developments in India, including a rise in human rights abuses by some government, police, and prison officials. I Obviously, words of condemnation are not nearly enough. What is needed is deliberate and concrete measures to prevent the mass extermination and mass displacement of 200 million Indian Muslim citizens, which would constitute the largest genocide in human history. We must continue to expose the Indian government's actions along with the deeds and discourse of its Hindu nationalist supporters. Yes, the world is finally waking up, but it must act now, because by most reasonable estimates, it has only a one to two year window to prevent a Muslim holocaust. Anyway, that's a wrap for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please like and subscribe to this channel and help spread the word with your friends and family on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And we kindly ask you please support this endeavor by becoming a member of this show at patreon.com slash CJ We can't produce, sustain, and grow this show without your help, and we offer exclusive benefits to those who do. But for now, good night, good morning, or good day, wherever you are, and stay blessed.